without him, Chucky. Oh no.
Thank you. 
It's a sad time, but it should be a glad time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Because our sister died in the hope. Hallelujah. In the hope of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let us celebrate when the dead died in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to celebrate the life of Sister Joanna by giving praise unto God. Hallelujah. And I believe that she would want it any other way than us to just rejoice. Rejoice knowing that she died in the hope of Christ. And I can remember when she was in the hospital every night, she would still be on Bible study. Oh my God. That is true. Steadfastness in the faith of Christ, even in the bed of sickness. Hallelujah. She knew that her God. It reminds me of the children of the three Hebrew boys when they were thrown into the fire, a furnace. Hallelujah. And they said, even if God won't help me, I still won't fall. Hallelujah. That is joy to give God thanks for. Hallelujah. That even if, hallelujah, we don't come out on the side that we hope. Hallelujah. We won't bow. We won't bow. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to sing this song. And I just want you to just enjoy yourself. Just feel free to just dance and, and sing in the presence of God. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate.
for a while. And this time, we'll take the first lesson, which will be by Cassina and Rokana, her niece. Can we all stand as she reads? That's Revelation 21, reading from 1 to 6. Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, appeared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, make all things new. He said unto me, Write, for their words, these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. You are ready to work and speak to God. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all Lord 
Jesus Christ. Let me know, Lord Jesus Christ, he is a Savior. Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, look today, Lord Jesus. We know that you can comfort. Oh God, you be with family today. Lord Jesus, throw your arms around them today, Jesus. With the word, Lord Jesus, in their ears. Oh God in heaven, Lord. We let them know, Lord, it's not easy. But in this life, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, they can come in the church. Not because, Lord God, you are died for us, Lord. Lord, you show example, Lord. Not me, Lord Jesus. One day, Lord Jesus, we call upon this word, Lord Jesus Christ. And today, Lord, we know, Lord, we ask for this moment, Lord, that we intervene in this place today. Lord, you bless everything that is said and done today, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, Lord. Lord, God Almighty, make your presence. Lord, make your presence be acceptable today, Jesus. Oh, God, somebody, Lord Jesus, we cry out, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God Almighty, because I see a man, and this man must be Christ Jesus. Oh, God, in this time, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we need Lord Jesus Christ. More of you, Lord, Lord Jesus, someone will accept you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we say to us, Lord, please answer our prayer today. Lord, let our prayer come up for your sweet man, Lord. Bless and sanctify today. Take over the service, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll be taking our second lesson, and it will be read by Tamika Margot. And it will be reading, be reading from John 14, 1 to 6. Can we all stand for the reading of the scripture? John 14 verse 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I come again and will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know the way. Thomas said unto, unto him, Lord, we know not whither the voice, how know ye the way. Six and last, Jesus said unto him, I am the way and the truth, shall and the and life, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Great things he has done. Can I invite you to stand with me one more time? We're here as brother. I'm um, someone would have said earlier, we're here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate. And I want us to do this chorus together as we move into these tributes and other items that will be coming in, in our program today. We want to do this chorus together and sing with all your God if you know it. Just sing with us. Are you ready to sing? Are you ready to sing? Yes, man. Jesus gone to prepare a mansion for me. But if you have a test 
Christian, and that's what we live for. The fact that one of these days, where Jesus is, we will be there also. And that's where our hope is. So we say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest prey, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. here in Westmoreland. We have also Pastor Winter Urban. Winter with us. We have Pastor Michael Mills. Minister Clive Campbell is also seated there. You can have some Campbell over there. Um, I see my big brother. I love you. So good to have you. If you don't mind joining us up here, you can come on up and join us up here, please. I see um, Pastor Lesma Lawrence. Ma'am, please. You are welcome to sit with us up here. If it's okay with you, you are welcome to come and sit with us. Stephen McKinnis is down there. Um, all our ministers in the house, wherever you are from, God bless you. It's a pleasure and a privilege to have you in the house today to celebrate the home going of this beautiful soul. Family members, I don't want you to feel the way I feel. But I'm just glad. Lord, I just feel like I want to cry sometimes. But I'm glad that this woman knew the God I serve. She stayed with him. She stuck it out. She lived it out. Last night I just took a few minutes to go back to our little conversations that we have. I mean, I'm going to keep them, but keep them as long as we can. Because it is like a whole heap of conversations. And, and that we just like, hear our voice every time. So we can always go back. And if you don't have it, up there. You have it. <laughs> so God, we're going to do a great thing for us as done. We at this time, we'll be taking um, tribute letters. Okay. We'll be taking an item from Sandals at this time, Neptune staff. And they'll be doing an item on behalf of the daughter in law, Angela. Put your hands together for them, make them welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Can the church praise the Lord? Can the people of God give God some praise? On behalf, I see my manager coming. We are here to represent Ebony and just to give condolence to her family that is grieving at this time. And we want you to know that we know it's not easy, but we know that God is bigger than what people say. Amen? Yes. And he will sustain you 
in this hard time. Here I'm going to minister a song. I hope it bless your heart. All I have in these hands and multiply. God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Come on, you ask it. All I have in these hands and multiply. God, all
It is already been here. And when the Bible uses the word mansion, it's because they just couldn't write the word room. Because when you read other translations, he said, in my father's house, which he was talking about himself, there are many spaces or there are many rooms. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And where did he go? He went straight to Calvary. Oh my God. And when he went to Calvary, he created space for me, for you, 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 you and everybody. And all we need to do is step in there. Can I talk to you, church? All we need to do is to step in there. So Jesus said, come to me, all in that labor, and I heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So when you get into that room, you, Jesus said, any man will come, I will come into him, and he will come into me, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Can I tell you today that there is still room? There is still room. There is still room. And for those of us who have already stepped into the room, nobody can evict you. Nobody can put you out. Nobody can disown you out. Because guess what? The Bible says you are ears and join ears with Christ. You are fellow citizens with the saints. And guess what? When Jesus comes, he is coming back not for people who are speaking in tongues. He ain't coming back for church folks either. So you're going to have church in your job. Jesus ain't coming back just for church folks. You know who he's coming back for? He's coming back for his people. He's coming back for people in whom is his word. And when the word of God is in you, can I tell you that the time when you have Christ? And when the word is in you and Jesus looks down upon you, the Bible says he will see you at the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So my friend John, make sure. That when the door was flung wide open, she just, I don't know what size shoe she wear. I know she was trophy. But that, she just step in there and take her seat. And she said to the Lord, you call me in the room, see me here. And Jesus said, come, welcome, welcome, very family. Don't worry yourself. Can I tell you that you can cry if you want to? But guess what? John is fine. The Bible says that when we dead, and some of us are here to with our dead, but when we dead, the body goes back to the ground from whence it came, but the spirit goes back to God that day, bitch. And hello, somebody. Can I tell you? What a thing that will be when we see Jesus. So lift up your hands. Lift up your spirit. My prayer to God for you, my friend. You may have talked to special. You know I'm already, don't you? Seek the Lord before you're dead. And call upon him while he is near. God bless you all in Jesus' name. If I could count the many tears that are falling, 
It was seems like an ocean to me. And if my heart was a window, you would look through. And what
And Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I know she's gone to a place where I believe we first were gone. She got before me. But I always sit and say, my mother have eight of us. Who will be the first? I don't call anybody name, I call my name, me. Because I can't tell about anybody, I can't tell about myself. My sister and I live so very poor. In her sickness, I dream her. She didn't tell me what her sickness is. But I got a vision that me and my sister, I don't know which one, went to the doctor. And I said to her, to the doctor, doctor, I want to know what's wrong with my sister because I don't hear anybody say anything. So you tell me. Doctor said to me, what do you think? I said, I think it's cancer. And he looked at me and he do like this. The morning I wake, I said, Joan, I have a vision last night about you. But me not tell you neither. I'm not telling you, but I have a vision. She didn't ask me what is it she never tried to hear. But we keep me and she keep me. Every time she would call and ask for me what happened. I said, what do you say now, Milda? Because of Milda, me called. She said, Milda, what do you say now? She said to me, say, could you not come to me? Say, yes, ma'am. One of the times she, she, she put on video call for me. I said, my God. I said, my sister gone. I said, I'm coming. I get up one morning early as ever. And I went up. I get my drive and I went up. And when she see me, she do like this. And she cried and she cried and she stretched out her hand and I stretched mine. And I went, oh, oh. I said, my dear, don't worry yourself. When she in the hospital, I sing for her. Whatever time the song them come, I the one when my granddaughter does sing, I sing for her. Because I know I believe in her and I believe that God takes her for a reason. And I said, do not worry yourself, my sister. Don't worry. She said, girl, I'm not feeling no pain. I said, thank God. He don't give you anything, but anyhow. Ride out your storm. Just keep riding on. God will take care of you one day. And that day, we will meet our brothers and sisters. And I just feel my trust in God that one day, I too will be here standing too. Because of that, don't have no, 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 no special person. When it comes, it comes. Whenever time is your time, they will take you too. And I just put my trust in him. I believe God will take me too. Right now I'm on the morning I have to go and see the doctor. I don't know what's wrong inside my belly too. So me, I'm going to go find out. And because in time like this, there are so many sickness around. And you have to go and seek out if you're not going to say you never come. So me, I go. And me, I go see I'm here for me. We do as much already, but me, I go see that one yes, But I know I'm not afraid of death. Because death made for every man. When you're ready, I just want to know that I'm in the right place. At the right time. When you don't see me come to church, don't worry yourself. Don't worry. Sometimes it's pain. My foot does well. Me need them and hurt me, my back and hurt me. I can't go nowhere. I just have to just keep moving. But I make up my mind that one day I will come when the can't make it. Sometimes my money too. I mean one. Sometimes my money may tell you the truth. The truth is to be known. Sometimes I don't have it. And I just look at it and say, no, I do know everything best. But I keep my own service. I keep my own service home and enjoy him because he's there with me every day of my life. Every day God is there with me. Because it, it sometimes it's better to say what you have to say, but keep it in here. So keep it, let it go. Let it go be free. And you will make it. Don't make anything.
them with a secret, no secret, no, they mean you have none. But besides, when me when me have who me call, me can't say to. I say I need prayer. So tell my sister say one prayer to me. Because the pain is all over. But thank God for Jesus. She gone on before me. And I hope the Lord will take care of me too till I can meet her one day. God bless everybody. And who don't come, come now. And who don't come, if I could even my children. I pray for them every day. I ask God to help them to change their lives to him. I ask him and he will do it one day. God bless everybody. And say to your my sister, we meet in the morning. God bless you. Yes, let's clap. Let's clap a little stronger. Michael Red. Bless the Lord. To all the ministers in the house, to our host, pastor, and all the very families and well wishes, it's a privilege to be here this afternoon to celebrate in this momentous event. Indeed, death is very close, but we never get used to it. Amen. And the multi-million question, multi-million dollar question is who will be next? Tell me. I don't know. It could be me, you know. As Sister Carol would say, you know, to kind of bring a little smile on the face because in these times you need somebody to help to put a smile on the face. So not true. Yes, man. Indeed, it's, it's a sad situation, but Christ has everything in control. And so, my father used to say to over that side, and he used to say, under your control. Under your control, oh God. You remember him? Yes. yes, he's passing, waiting for me. And one day I'm going to meet him too. Indeed, Sister Drone and myself are good friends. Um, she was a, a product of Sister Buchanan, who was an icon in this church. Amen. I can still remember one message Sister Buchanan preached here. Mortify your member. Classic message. I never knew that lady was so intelligent. You know, but when, when I began to look around at the meaning of the word, she was spot on. Amen. It was a message long time spoken, but it's still relevant today. Amen. And thank the Lord for what he has done and the items. Write out your song. Love this song. Indeed, take it out for a storm. But we are encouraged to ride out and Sister Carol did as well in testifying and exhorting and encouraging and having Alpha come. <laughs> All in one package. Amen. So we are going to be going a little further in our offer to him. And we'll be doing this one. What will it be when we get over yonder? Amen.
What a day, what a morning. A morning that will come with its own clothes. A morning that will come with its own clothes. Not a cloud will ever be seen like that before. When we wake up, amen, with Jesus Christ. What a story we have to tell. Somebody say we will tell the story how we overcome. Hallelujah. And we will understand it better. By and by. Praise the Lord. I'm looking, I'm, I'm really looking forward. Amen. To that day, to that morning. God bless us to realize the same. In the name of the Lord. Today it affords me great privilege. And I take it as a pleasure to be here. My life to um, take part in this Thanksgiving service. Memory of the loving, memory of John, you can <laughs> Amen. It's a privilege. Uh, let me let me first give respect to um, the house pastor, Pastor Mullins and his associate, her associate. Um, so um our Parish overseer, um, Pastor Aston Miller. I mean, I mean, I mean, this new day is new, so some of us will forget it for a long, long time. I might say something else, but it means it mean this year. Amen. Amen. I want to greet the other members of the clergy over there, Pastor Nils Pastor. Keith Jones, uh, Minister Campbell, and Elder uh, Bromfield. Amen. Also, um, Pastor Lee, down in the congregation, and other ministers, friends. Last but not least, all the members of the bereaved family, including almost the same. Nico was to say. Yes. My, my cousin talked about going up to look at you. And uh, some other people here will go and look at other people. <laughs> but I have a good relationship, long, long time to that family. Of course, many men, many of the children. And I, I, I tell you the truth, it's a privilege. People who don't know them, Nancy and them, Mills and them, Fowler and Junior and Keith and what is Okay. Alright, the others now don't know anything else. You're too young. Amen. Praise the Lord. But when I was asked to play this role, I I thought for a while, a short while, and then it wasn't too long, I had to accept it. Like, you know, when people stick you up, you don't want to space to move. You have to take a stick up. Can't move. And um, I want to, I want to thank, um, first, the host pastor for accepting the desire of the family for me to do the sermon. I say that because I have full respect for it. Uh, I respect pulpit mannerism. I like to go with it as much. Even though sometimes we have desire for family, of course we can't stop that. But I still believe that if there's one item on the program, that exclusively the prerogative of the pastor is the sermon. So if the pastor come out of desire or out of idea, have to be adhered. So I want to thank all parties, so to speak, for giving me this privilege to 
minister to us today. Actually, for me, I think, um, I think Joe and Guy two times from two times. When I heard she was sick, she was dead. And then having the opinion or the idea that she is dead. When we had Brother Joel funeral, I, I asked Pastor Pins, when will the Joan funeral? Pastor Pins said, Joan who? He said, as I heard that, that she died. And then, long and short of the story, there was Pastor Pins. I get this and we we'll start now about the funeral here a few weeks ago, my pastor. And it was then I, I found out that she finally gone. All right, and what a home, what a home though. What a home. And I want to just say, every man, every man today, that have this hope in him, you gotta do something about it by way of purification. You gotta purify yourself, even as he's pure. And so, Sean Coy, maybe I, I think I'm going to hear because this is not one of my recycled sermons for present for funerals or anything, you know? You know, sometimes we recycle them. But this is fresh off the press, brand new. Just a couple of hours ago, it was combined. Yeah, between 9.30 and daylight. Yes, 9.30 last night, at least, and daylight. So, I think it's a word from the Lord. Beautiful. Um, the text that I want to use today is from the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Philippians 2, 8 to 10. I wrote up 1, sorry, Philippians 1. 8 to 10. Amen. All right. Even for God is my record. Oh, great. I long after you all in bowels of Jesus Christ. This I pray that your love may abound yet more and more the knowledge and the judgment. He may approve things that are excellent and he may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Genesis chapter 3 12 and 90. And the man and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent. Beguiled me, I did it. 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For all of this thou was taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The word of the Lord has read today. Praise the Lord. Um, it is clear to be seen that um, God has a very special love for humanity. That at the time of the fall of man, Adam, the head of the human race, indeed introduce three types of death to the 
the human race as a result of his disobedience. Physical death that all of us now experience. Spiritual death, the physical death of the one of us understand it. And the spiritual death is separation from God. And then everlasting death is total alienation from God at the end of the given time to each individual on earth. And so it tells us that at the sentence of been passed upon all of us, including the same ones, even now. One of the categories of death, physical death, all of us is subject to the same. None of us can avoid it. But everlasting, amen, death, repentance, and a bad again experience, hallelujah, can alleviate that. And no man that is born on the face of this earth can escape that death because there is a death sentence or sentence that is passed upon all through Adam. Amen. When we come to think about a sentence, we begin to think seriously Amen. of what a sentence is. A sentence is a decision of a law court, especially in criminal matters. Persons who are convicted, hallelujah, are found guilty of a crime, waits his sentencing. But there's something that we all must know here. First, a man was found guilty or plead guilty before sentencing can take place. This sentence of death that is on all came about through one man's sin. For a one man sin enter. So by one man Righteousness came. Somebody have me said, thank God for righteousness today. Adam, the head of the human race, left us in trouble. Hallelujah. Trouble, trouble, trouble. When God tried up for trial, he did not even plead guilty. In fact, he blamed God and said, the woman which you give me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So you first is responsible to God. Because you gave the woman to me. Second responsibility is the woman. Come on, come on, come on. Am I talking to people that live in a society and church? Where we fear to own our hands and our undoings, we will call the extra man to find somebody to blame for our transgression. Oh, praise God! But according to the word of God, there man, somebody that God passed the sentence, and God passed the sentence. In Genesis, what oh, praise the Lord? And he said, what oh, praise the name of Jesus? In the sweat of thy face, 
people need to know that you must be afraid. Paul said, no, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade man. You see what we hear about the battle listing? Hell is a place that no have no battle. That's what it means. It don't have a, it don't have a surface at the battle. It is bottomless. You keep falling, you not just keep falling, but you're ever falling. And you can't stop. Amen. And at that time, your skin and your flesh, worm eating your flesh and you're feeling it. And the worm that you're going to get all on dead. Oh, God Almighty, let me move on here. Oh, God, what a place. It is a place to escape, my friend. What a place. God hell. We are the worm that it not. And the fire does not quench. Paul was not afraid to die. And we must reach the state that we are not afraid to die. Even if we are afraid of death, we are not afraid to die. Paul knew where his feet. And that's why he said that he was ready to die. But he never mind. Not dying so that the believers are the church of the living God. Would be more help by his ministry so that they would be better prepared to meet death in victory. Oh, yeah. oh God, and so he said, Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Finally, Amen. God declared, For to me to live is Christ. Listen to this. To me to live. If I live, it's for Christ's glory. And to die is given for my own. Amen. Glorification. Amen. But he said he ran out of the end to get some people ready. Oh, praise the Lord. And he went on to say, My God, nobody less. Oh, God, before I said, For I am in a street between two. That would be here. Having my desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Somebody bless the Lord with me. Nobody less. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I live. Yet not I, but the Christ that liveth in me. Let Jesus fix your business for you, my friend. Amen. Let him drop the charges. Only he can drop the eternal charges. Amen. For you today. And it be now and give you eternal life to live with him in glory. There was someone preparing this presentation that came to me that I can't remember singing for over 20 years. And it speaks to the frailty of man and the future and the preparation that must be made. When the angel of death
But I want you to know today that there's a difference between amen, sick bed and dead bed. Sick bed and dead bed is two different things. Sick bed, you can say anything. But you're so conscious. It's your own voice talking. Dead bed is uttered by the voice of death and speak the truth. So don't be confused. It is the dead bed and the dead word that matters in the presence of the Lord, not sick bed. God bless you, people here. That the sentence of death in a physical sense and everlasting sense will not tell his story. God bless you, I thank you. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank the choir for such a wonderful rendition. Amen. And we also thank Pastor Winter for these words of inspiration and encouragement. Amen. And it point us to that eternal place because you and I have a choice to make. I can't make a choice for you. You have to make it for yourselves. Amen. Amen. And now is the time. Today, if you hear his voice, then harden not your hearts. Amen. And whether we like it or not, we can't do anything about that when it comes. Oh, God. It's appointed that a man wants to die. But after this, the judgment. So we must be ready. I pray we all be ready. What says you? I pray we all be, be ready when he returns. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to be continuing our program with the eulogy, and this will be read by Pastor Rosamund Mohonigan Mullins. And followed by Tribute and Road of Dance, all right? By Cadian Chris, Christy, and we have our sons and daughter in law. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. And I just want to briefly share um, to say that Dennis Allen, he wanted to have an item on the program, but he cannot be here, so he asked me to just um, say these words for him. Well, um, and I don't want to spend time to read all of it, but he said he remembered calling Sister Joan one day, he didn't get through, he left a voice note, and he sang a song for her that says, I'm pressing on the offer me. Sister Joan got the call, called him back, and then she sang back a song for him. Oh. One that says, I feel like pressing my way. Oh. And she, he said, she sang from the bottom of her heart. And then I, then I'm here, he said, I knew she was ready and waiting on the Lord to receive her. Whenever we talked, she was passionate about going home. So I know she was ready. He said, Sister Joan, I don't mourn for you as one that have no hope, but I miss you so much. Um, you're ever smiling, ever giving jokes, so loving and kind. You love God with a passion and I admire you. I miss the days we used to talk and laugh and talk about God. Only memories remain my cousin, my sister and my friend. And I will cherish them until the day we meet on the other side. Um, and he says, Sister Joe and Mr. Cameron, cause you lived a fulfilled life. You fought a good fight, you kept the faith. You finish your course, and he said to you, Come, be blessed, and you answer the call. Rest in the arm of your Savior, so to speak, until that great day when he will return, and you will return to, to receive those that, that remain and are alive. And that is from this. It gives me great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure to write this eulogy, eulogizing the Joan, the joyful, jovial, jubilant Joan Buchanan. God favored the family of the late Gradel with honor of Mehmet and Theodore Buchanan. When he gave unto them a girl who was joyful, one of a kind, adorable, natural, 
She was born Monday, December 19, 1960, and she was raised right here in this district. One can just imagine that she was a beauty to be born. She became a pro student of New Hope All Age and was an ardent Sunday School Scholar of the Church of God of Prophecy right here where her mother faithfully served until the day of her death. She was the sixth of eight children. She was named Joan, which means God is generous. And in the Hebrew language, Joan means gift God. Indeed, a gift she was. This gift of God had a beautiful childhood. In spite of not being able to achieve all she would have loved to, she grew up with all her siblings and she had her mother's prayer that carried her through every stage of life. She started fending for herself many years ago as she always desired to be independent. Joan had a beautiful personality and she knew how to laugh. She knew how to love and she also fell in love. Out of love, she bore two gracious children, Orville, we know him as dad, and Fiona who in turn gave her grandchildren. And she also has a great grandchild on the way, Joan the Fish Trader. She took up selling quite a few years ago. It is said that the language of motherhood knows no borders. So selling fish was her bread and butter. And she proudly did this to provide food on her table for herself, her children, and grandchildren. Talk about children and grandchildren. Joan was a proud mother and a proud grandmother. She loved Dad and Fiona with a capital L. And I proudly say that today. I know she loved her children. I don't know a perfect mother. So probably she did not get everything right. But one thing I am sure of, her heart was filled with love for her children. The grand ones and even the great grand one that she was hanging on to meet. She was also very caring when it came to her grandchildren. She loved her grandchildren. She loved them. She loved them. She loved her grandchildren. And I want to say this, and I say this because of what I know, what I saw. I know she loved all her grandchildren. But is it you not to pick them? Is it you not to pick them? You have to say, I fear them. I met Peyton before I see Peyton. Because Sister Joan's language sounded like it was in English because all she could talk was Peyton, 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 Peyton. She carried Peyton to church. She introduced her grandchildren to church. And Peyton was like her handbag that she enjoyed carrying, especially to church. And when she comes, she said, I'm here Peyton, I'm here Peyton, 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 Peyton. And you thought she didn't know anything else but Peyton. She took care of them, and she loved them wholeheartedly. In 2002, she fell in love with Jesus and decided to surrender to him her heart, soul, mind, and body. Sister Joan became a woman of faith, one who followed closely to learn about Jesus. I recall that during the height of the pandemic, she became what I would call her own registrar because that time we were registering persons to come to church. Every week I would get a voicemail from her listing out all the persons that need to be registered for the different services we're having. 
Let me see my knees. Right, it's got jelly. Can I see that? And she gave me all the kind of names of persons that she was registering. One day she registered everybody I never remember to register her sin. When the list came out, when I sent out the list, she voice noted me to say, Yeah, so how can I put this for this, ma'am? So I said to her, Sister Joan, listen to the message you sent me. You never mention yourself. She laughed and she said, Minister, you ever see anything or something? I see when the people preaching themselves and preach out as you know, ma'am. <laughs> Sister Joan tried her best. Not to miss morning prayer meetings. Even when she was going to Seaside, she would walk with her bucket and stay close to the back so she could slip out when she needed to. She joined wholeheartedly in prayer for her family and the community. She loved to pray. She loved the Lord. And like I said earlier, she was faithful. She loved her church family and she was loved also. She spent many years on the seaside doing business. And she would have garnered many friends during that time. So I know there are many persons that are mourning her loss today because of the woman that she was and the friend that she was and the family member that she was. During her illness, she always kept me abreast of what was going on. So if that was early or that was late to come get her to go so we know that. Anything at all was happening, I knew everything that was going on. And she also remained in high spirits, even in the roughest of times. One of her bona fide friends, Sharon, told me that when she first heard of Sister Joan being in the hospital, she gave her a call to let her know she was just hearing that she was in the hospital. And Sister Joan responded and said, Yeah, I'm not going to be a five star hotel. <laughs> if you don't pass money, I'll be able to cook you, spread a bed and all that. Then a five star hotel, that's. <laughs> and I remember too that after she returned from her first trip into Kingston, and she came back very tired after that, brought her home, she sent me a voice message and it started like this. It is somebody's good evening, I'm not sure. <laughs> She was just much up because she said, this ride in the was just so long. And she was very exhausted from the distance. But she was very encouraging and she knew how to encourage herself. She said to me, Minister, purpose don't die. And the devil can't stand on its sentence. Ever since Sister Joan became ill and could not make it to church, her name is called in church as an encouragement to others because of her strength in God. When she was unable to come, we called her on WhatsApp during church time and let her watch the service and be a part. She would also join us in Bible study from the hospital bed on Zoom while we having Bible study on Tuesday night. She said John would not miss Bible study. She opened her camera, everybody could see her lying down in her bed, but she would be in Bible study. In an act of faith, she took a picture of a bottle of olive oil that she purchased and sent the picture of the oil for prayer to be made. Can I tell you, she was a virtuous woman. She was priceless. Yes, priceless. She was a gem. A great mother, grandmother, sister, family member, friend, and a sweetly saved child of God. She embodied compassion and love. She had a deep faith in God, and she was a thoughtful and kind soul. Billy Graham, one of the renowned preachers to have walked this earth, made a very profound statement that the greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and grandchildren is not money or other material things accumulated in one's life, but rather a legacy of character and faith. And that's very true because all the other gifts your parents gave you will fade sooner rather than later. But the precious gift of faith is something that will forever enrich your life more than you can ever imagine. Sister Joan could not have money because she didn't have much. 
She couldn't leave a big house. She couldn't leave the land, riches, or power. But she left a legacy of faith in Jesus. And even on her sick bed, she just talked about her children, her grandchildren, and her siblings. I had a chance to visit her at the hospital the Saturday before she passed. At her bedside were four of us, Jada, Angela, my niece, and myself. And before I prayed for her, she had a special word. And Angela and Jada, thank you very much, and that. She had a special word for one of her siblings. Pearl, she had a word for you. Right there on that bed, with tears coming down her eyes, she said, Pearl! Two brothers, 
one daughter in law, Angela, nieces, nephews, other relatives, friends, colleagues, and church family. She's gone and before us. And we will never forget that faithful Monday evening when the news arrived that she was gone. Somebody said, gone. Gone where? And family members, I know you are saddened by the passing of this great mother, grandmother, and sister. But I charge you to take courage and listen to what this clip says. Oh my darling, I'm home. I'm home. That's Sister Joel. I'm home. I'm home. And I believe that's what she would say to us today. She's home. Can you say that one more time, Simo? Oh my darling, I'm home. I'm home. Rest in peace, my girl. Jesus loves you best. Good night. to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Remembrance of Joan Elaine Buckingham from Orville Williams, her only son. Joan affectionately called by her son, old woman, or Auntie Joan, our young girl, was a friend, a mother, a grandmother, and soon to be a great grandmother. She has two children, but most importantly, she was a born again believers. believer. Amen, somebody? Amen. Growing up with Joan, my memories of her as a child, I would visit her on Sundays and I asked her for money to buy ice cream. And she would give me if she has it. If not, I would just understand and say, you know, as a little boy, when you go to your parents for money and they have it to give you, some of us would make noise, but our veil, our dad would just settle as a little boy and go right back to play. Auntie Joan taught me to cook from a tender age of eight years old, even though I was unable to reach the stove. I would climb up on something just to cook, whether a pot or a little stool. He would get on there and start to do his own little thing because his mom taught him. She would always say, don't allow woman to take you for a food. So learn how to do things from now and do it for yourself. I also remember taking care of my little sister. 
such as combing her hair for school, ironing her uniform. I also recall when Auntie Joan going out to the seaside, she would say on the steel of the yard. But dad would normally, you know, as a little boy, leave and go up on the corner or go next door. And when he would see his mom come in, he would take the road quickly, get home. But he says, I recall going over the other yard and when I see mom come in, I would run. And when she comes, she would pretend as if she didn't see me. But she said, boy, I think I didn't see I see you. You know, you must have to stay in the yard. Auntie Joan would always talk to me, he says, about following, not to follow bad company in the community, and that I should live a productive life. She would always stress the, the respect, the fact that I should be respectful, and that it was very important. He says that she would tell him, respect elders, respect your sibling, make sure you have respect. That's what she would stress. He says, my final, final memory of Joan, or Auntie Joan, was to watch her fight for life. Going back and forth in Kingston and Sub Hospital, seeking medical care for her illness. It was the hardest thing I have ever done. But I thank God he gave me the strength. My wife Angela and KK and others went to visit her the last day, which they didn't know that it would be the last day. His final memory was that he spoke to her on the phone, telling her also that I'll, be, I'll come to visit you on Sunday. But he could recall from his wife that when she went to the hospital, Auntie Joan was looking so cheerful she was so cheerful to the point where she was singing about Angela. Angela, her sweet Angela. She was requesting her not to cry. When she sleep, and when I say sleep, when you're a child of God, believers don't die. Come on somebody, believers never die. Because the Bible says to be absent from this life is to be present with your maker. She knew it was her time to sleep. However, she requested Angela not to cry. Amen, somebody. Auntie Joan knew it was her time of departure from this world and that it has come. And she was ready. Somebody say ready. ready. She was ready. We left Angela left with KK and the others telling her they would return on Sunday. But that day has never come. Upon hearing she was passed, Arvin was devastated. Therefore, he would like to say a big thanks to some persons. Sister Nancy, Sister Peggy, the church family, mommy and daughter, nurse, Herb, and grandson, Micah Dean, her two sons, Jenny daughter, Kayon, Jody, Marsha, Nicole, and Dawn, Wayne who worked at the hospital, Denise Allen, Miss Heaven, the ward assistant, who assists turning Joan while she was admitted. Last but not least, his family, his wonderful wife, his daughter KK and Jada, who stood by him. I know this will take us time to adjust. However, I believe we can make it by the strength of God. Amen, somebody. God bless you. Bless the Lord. That's a bit of history for us. The close of our chapter. We could just start what Brother Paul said at Father Good Fine. I've finished my fourth. I have kept the faith and henceforth it laid up for me a crown of life.
righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge shall think of us on that day. Very beautiful, wonderful life. And we give thanks to the Lord that we were so blessed to have such a wonderful person around us. To God be the glory. I'm going to be inviting Pastor Michael Mills to pray the prayer for the Beerit family at this time. Thank you very much, good afternoon, everyone. Even before I pray, I'd like to convey to the Beerit family. Um, my condolences on behalf of myself and my entire family to the Okanis family and the passing of a beautiful soul. Um, I stand a little bit tall today because if as it is said, that every soul that you win is a star in your crown, certainly John is a star in my crown. And I know she loved me for that. She would express it. Um, knowing Dad and Fiona, well, Elder Bumpy said he called her Fiona, but she was my niece. And um, even though not biological, but everywhere Fiona sees me is Uncle Mike and antigen. So as a result of that, I say, my niece, that is how close we have been. And so I ditto everything that has been said about Joe. And so it's my pleasure to be asked to pray this prayer on behalf of family. So, family, you may remain seated and I will ask everybody else who are not to stand with me. Praise God. Bless me the time that binds our hearts in Christian love. Fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flow a sympathizing tear. But when we are sung apart, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Precious Father and our loving God, we thank you for this opportunity that we can join together in celebration of the life of Sister Joan. Oh God, it is you who have made her. It is you who have called her and she has accepted the call and has lived that life that all of us can testify today of that good life that she lived. Somebody says that she spent her dash well. And oh God, we can attest to that. So today, as we celebrate her life, and if, if family members mourn, they mourn because they missed her. But it's not because there is no hope. There is hope of eternal life. That is a way John over yonder. Thank you God for the life to live. Which is a testimony to others. And so Lord if we are willing to take a page out of her book. We will be rewarded for such. So we pray today for the family. Oh God, that you will extend your mercies and your grace 
to every member of the family. Oh God, I pray you will undergird them with your strength. God, we recognize that in spite of the departure of this soul, you still care. We pray that you will take charge. Comfort the hearts of those that mourn today and help them to recognize that one day, if they live that life as Joan lived, they will be able to meet her on the banks of the beautiful river. Take charge now, we pray. Let there be peace in this family. Let, oh God, there be unity in the family. Oh Lord, I'm sure that Joan will never want to know, oh God, if she could know that there is division in the family. They would want them to be united in one in the name of Jesus. We pray for a blessing. We pray we'll take charge. We pray God for Dad and Fiona as children and all the grandchildren. We ask for your blessing. Oh God, the sibling, but I pray for Pearl in the name of Jesus. We pray for Pearl in the name of Jesus. John would love to know that Pearl surrendered to you. She held her hand up as an indication that hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, that she has done so. Seal her in the name of Jesus. And then her testimony be a blessing to others. Say it to the others. And we shall leave this sanctuary to the burial spot. We pray a journey mercy and that you will guide us as we go from incidents and accidents and all we be well. Prepare the family for the final part of this service, which can be devastating. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, thank you for hearing us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Next, the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
celebrate the life and mourn the death of our loved ones. The eternal God is at thy refuge and underneath our the everlasting arms. And we he shall trust out the enemies from before thee and shall say destroy them. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters he restores for it my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table 
before me in the presence of my enemies, so anointest my head with oil, my cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow thee all the days of thy life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At times like these, we are comforted by the memories of the ones we love. Though we are sad, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. We know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them, also them which are asleep, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout at the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship and fellowship with our deceased sister hereby. We cherish the many blessed and hallowed memories that come to us in these moments. For her faithfulness, friendship, and consecrated life will continue their radiance and testimony in our life. As it has pleased the Lord in his wise providence to take unto himself the soul of our deceased sister hereby, we now commit her to the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And do we do rest our hearts in first confidence upon the shore and certain hope of the resurrection to life through Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Let us pray. Father, we gather in this solemn place to remember the life and more the death of our loved ones. We do not sorrow as those who have no hope, for our hope is in Jesus Christ. We ask that you would comfort each family member and friend. May they be comforted by your word, encouraged through happy memories, and sustained by the hope of the resurrection for all who place their faith in you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you his peace. God bless you as the workmen will continue the process of finishing up the job started. We turn back to our programs and we'll be singing Jesus Hold My Hand. As I travel through this still grim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Lead me safely to the sinking sand. It is the cross of Calvary. This would be, this would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed world. Leave me that I may be holy thine. Leave me that I may be holy thine. And see redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true. I will be a soldier brave. And never firmly take a stand. And never firmly take as I onward go and daily oh, as I onward go and daily be the full blessed Jesus hold my hand. Oh, dear Lord, look down. 
God bless you. God bless you. Have a great sir. one. Bless you.